There's no way the perp isn't here, officer. Look how scarred the boards are. All attempts to pry them off have failed. The suspect? God, I hope not. I can't see a way in, though many have tried. Not this time. The opposition is insurmountable, but I like the spirit. Have some points. It's lonely and cold without points. And dangerous. Dangerous. light vanishes inside the concrete slit. The structure goes deep under the earth. Maybe it's just a storm drain for the sewer. There's no echo and no answer. No idea. Could be connected to one of the buildings around here. We might find her down somewhere. There's an old storm drain system beneath Martinez that's mostly collapsed. Revachol's sewage system has been built and rebuilt four or five times now. In conclusion, she could be under any building. <sighs> I hope not. And Mikael noticed you officers. Nice to meet you. No, I can't say that we've met before, but I've heard of Kim, of course. Mikael, Mikael's a little tired today. 
The man speaks in the artificial cadence of a professor, or someone who's been on too many radio shows. But I assume you're not here for giant worms when there are so many real things to see. This man is your half-brother. You feel it. But why? Well, get a load of this guy. He really enjoys his trivia. The Orbis programming language was named after its inventor, Victor Orbis, a cybernetician from Grad. They run Vox in the Occidental countries. No, I'm afraid I can't help you with this one, officer. It's just a regular day off for me and Mikhail here. So you haven't seen anyone around? No, I'm sorry. As I said, this is just a day off. We j There's something friendly and familiar in how he says that. A day off. He's telling the truth. He hasn't seen anyone. Aha! But it's not just any empty old building. What not a lot of people know is, this used to be the R&D department of Felt Electrical. And Felt, which now sells ink cartridges mostly, was once a top dog in the turn-of-the-century cybernetics boom. Hold on. What's R&D? Apologies, it's an acronym for research and development. <laughs> they don't use it anymore. You're probably more familiar with RTD, Research and Technological Development. Mayor Kalpa, you are not familiar with that one either. This man is a bookhead. That's not surprising. Only a vestigial ink cartridge and ferrotape manufacturer remains. They started out as a Midway Electronics outfit in Königstein two centuries ago. After an aggressive move to Revachol, Feld became a global player in the emerging personal electronics market of the pre-revolutionary era. Still, Tricentennial was beating them in business machines. But Feld had an ace up their sleeve. Or should I say, they were developing an ace up their sleeve? I'm mixing my metaphors here. It was here in Martinez, possibly in this very building, that they developed prototypes for a tape computer. Mm -hmm. An elegant folding mechanism of rollers and ferrotape ribbons, portable enough to be a take-it-home solution. Revolutionizing business machines, possibly even bring them to the average consumer. Which is a feat of engineering even today's giants, Rehm, ICN and Zam, haven't achieved yet. He assumes something like a combat stance, facing the wind. Indeed. What? The revolution! Unfortunately, their moonshot project never made it to the market. Feld's move to Revachol backfired. The revolutionary government liquefied their assets and expropriated those very advanced prototypes. Possibly from this very building, or one of the adjacent ruins. All of this was built by Felt, even a boardwalk. While Pines built Martinez proper as a resort for their middle management, Felt built this side of town for R&D. Yes, they even built a pleasure wheel, but that got destroyed in the war. A pleasure wheel? Perhaps reminded of a childhood memory. It's clear he would prefer there were a big wheel lighting up the coast. Yes. To lure in their star engineers. This part of Martinez was nothing but reeds before it felt arrived. They had to make the prospect of living here attractive. It was supposed to become a global center for innovation in cybernetics. But history had other plans. Actually, no one knows. No one even knows what a computer made entirely of tape would look like. But word has it, they were very elegant, exquisite, alien looking, turn of the century hardware. Buckle up. Ten years ago, I did a little 
Freelancing, I guess you could say. I was a special consultant for an exhibition at the Womti Domti Dom Center in Vredefort, Oranje. It raised the same questions, and we had lengthy discussions with Paul Ockerman, who was head curator at the time. This was before the twins Keith and Guy Jews joined the team, trying to... Wait, did he just say Womti Domti Dom Center? He did it. He said Womti Domti Dom Center like it's the most natural thing in the world. What the hell is a Wompty Dompty Dom Center? And who the hell are Keith and Guy Joost? The Wompty Dompty Dom Center for Contemporary Arts. The exhibition itself drew on Lagerman's notion of memory, and so there were some parallels. That's why the head curator, Paul Ockerman, chose to... <laughs> in fact, I'm not. The Wompty Dompty Dom Center is a place you can visit if you're ever in Vredefort and are ever in the market for an exhibition space slash contemporary art research center. <clears throat> but perhaps I should return to the tape computers. As I was saying, the device itself was very elegant, fragile even. One could write directly on the tape using a special chemical solution. The machine would then analyze the handwriting, perform operations and project output onto a white screen. It was a beautiful, delicate thing. Made of black film and folding tape structures. Even one would be very useful. Though I understand the socio-economic causes of the revolution, it pains me to imagine the revolutionary setting fire to the precious device. But so they did. The felt playback experiment. Yes, the official name of the prototype. Some sources rep- Who knows? Maybe it was an accident, or maybe they didn't want the technology to end up in the wrong hands. But of course, what else? No, thanks- seen better days. The light I'll wait outside to give you some time and privacy to check out your new living. After we are done with the day, I'll still be staying in the whirling in rags. The key turns with a satisfying inside the wash basin. The water reflects back a vague image of your face, nose bulbous and red, hair unkempt, wrinkles lining the eyes and forehead. The stash is gigantic. You'll be looking like a pansy without the chops. A fucking pansy.
A fresh start looms ahead. Clean yourself up and be born anew. On the table, you see a bowl of water, a rough soap, and next, like an artist with a brush or a master swordsman, you use the small mirror and the straight razor with some soap to remove all that unkempt hair from below the nose line. The sharp blade chafes against your skin, producing a scratching sound. The soap, they feel so smooth, surprisingly so. A feeling of freshness overcomes you, as if you just came from a cold bath. An old mirror hangs on the wall. You see your reflection in it. The expression fixed to your clean-shaven face. You're still not accustomed to it. The bed is comforting. An old mirror hangs on the wall. You see your reflection in it. The expression fixed to your clean-shaven face. Still not happening. It won't come off that easy. Thank you. 
A brisk coastal wind still howls against the window of the shack. Occasionally, the waves crawl in under the foundation, producing a low hum. The room feels muffled, like you pulled your hat over your ears. Outside, it is cold and windy, but you're inside, and it feels safe and warm. What is this place to you? Waves crash onto the beach, drowning the reeds. Far to the south, a congregation gathers to a soup kitchen in a shelter for the homeless. An old woman gives out knitted scarves for free. Far to the southeast, two men and a woman dress themselves in ceramic armor. A shortwave radio hisses on the windowsill. One makes a salute, the other downs a drink. Whip, a middle-aged man, stands in a rundown shack on the edge of a fishing village. Nothing nods. No one salutes him. No sight of the fugitive. Outside, the howl of the wind has picked up. The waves crash against the stilts again. It's as if you think the thought but in someone else's voice. Look under the floorboards. Mm. These are some wonderfully regular pants. Not too tight, not too loose, moderate in every sense. You'll blend right in at some pleasant dinner party. Mm hmm. I know you do. These inter pants are like wearing a perfect compromise in your nether regions. No one will call the moral intern on you like this, that's for sure. You're a little more moralist now, buddy. A little more normal, even if you didn't want to be. Makes sense. This is what wearing boring office trousers does to you. Yes? Yes. Uh, um, um, I don't know what to say. Uh, <clears throat> perhaps... Uh, I'm not really sure about this turn of events. I think the mutton chops might have been a better idea. They sort of seem to cover up some of the... Um, Damage. Either way, good on you. Our tenant, the policeman. I hope the waves don't keep you up at night. What can I help you with? Nay, I haven't seen anyone lately. This is my little cinder block town. I know what goes on around here. She's being evasive. She knows something. There was a murder in Martinez. She might be a suspect. We would appreciate your help. 
Would you now? I know how this world works, and it doesn't work when people tell on each other. Ah, I should have known. This is yet another Union mess. I'm not afraid of them, you know. We are not in the habit of being afraid around here. There's not much to tell. People come and go. Now, was there something else? I see, ma'am. I hope you don't mind if we look around anyway. You should look around your shack. Maybe she's rented it out to others, too. As you look at the floorboards in this corner of the shack, it's clear one of them isn't quite level, with the edge of a floorboard next to it looks scratched. Hollow space underneath the floorboards is dark and damp. You can barely make out the mixture of sand and sawdust below. Nothing particular catches your eye. Looks like more reeds. There might be something hidden inside the sand, though. Something bad. Someone's night thoughts. A last resort. A bad idea. You stick your hand in and start combing through the sand. Dry, not like outside. Fine dust. And then, something hard wrapped in paper. A small cylindrical object. You pull it out. A bullet. A 9mm bullet, to be exact. Fit for all muzzle loaders of that caliber. The floorboard doesn't care, but maybe the washerwoman does. You have it holding the bullet, you get the feeling. This isn't ammunition against you, it's for herself. Our tenant, the policeman. I hope the waves don't keep you up at night. Damn that girl. And without anger, a long and harsh life has taught her not to buckle under pressure. A bullet? You didn't put it there, did you? She did. Gone and hid things in there? She's usually a good tenant, and not a stupid one either. Yes. I let my room to that ruby girl. As I've done before when she's been in trouble or just looking for solitude. I've made it clear. We welcome all kinds of people here. She came last Friday, left on Monday in a hurry. What has she gotten herself into, that girl? She seems genuinely worried about her previous tenant. She's seen her hiding out from trouble before, but this seems different. That's for the police to find out. Right there. Please answer each question to the best of your ability. I'm sure we have a few. She's good company. Knows how to talk to an old woman. At my age, you don't get a lot of quality conversation. So I really appreciate that about her. Did she talk to you much during her last day? No, she was mostly silent this time. She tried not to let it show, but I could tell she hadn't come to fish. Usually she likes to cast a few lines, 
but this time she mostly stayed in her room. Yes, early with the dogs, around eight o'clock, I think. She probably heard the Lieutenant's Kanema drive by, and it woke her up, just like it did you. Yes, that is a downside of having a 130 kilowatt engine. It lets the bad guys know when you are coming. I cleaned it, like I always do. No. The truth, sire. How would I know? She's a gruff one, but not violent. She doesn't go around toting a gun. You could ask her about your hunch, that it was a desperate measure. See if she thinks Ruby fits the bill. I do tell. Exit from what? The lieutenant stops writing for a moment. He looks at you, then at the old woman. No, she's a fighter. Not a quitter, like you sometimes get, son. She really believes that. Not that I knew of, though she was into nice music. She once showed me a few mixtape milieu she'd made. Although I guess she was pretty handy with the mechanical and technical stuff. Even fixed the heater in the shack. You should be thankful for that. She may simply have kept the equipment elsewhere. I don't know. Further up the coast, she tried to leave quietly, but the hinges on that door screeched like a cat in heat. Woke me up. I heard her rushing in those heavy boots, heading up north. It's a peninsula. She might be trapped. You'll never find her, you know. She knows the coast like the back of her hand. You only just arrived. I wouldn't worry about that, ma'am. We are persistent. Are you sure you would rather stay here? Get a nice cozy fire going in the heater? Seems like a better idea to me. The Feld Electric Mural. You feel like you should go look at it again. Step closer this time. What more do you want to know about that poor girl? Yes, let's hear those other... One thing, officer. If you do find her, please go easy on her. She really means it. It's an honest plea. She's a good girl. Whatever she's gotten herself mixed up in.
see a once bright mural towering above you. Above the mural, a collapsed roof, broken windows set in walls that are cracking and will soon also fall, and the coastal breeze rustling and sighing in the remains of the edifice. Feld Electrical, you only know them as a small company that makes ink cartridges. Looks like they used to be big. There's something in the wind. Some in there? She could. Or she could be in the identical room over there, or in that boat shack. In that church tower, maybe. Why single out this one building? In there? Why single out this one building? The once bright mural towers above you, saying, Feld Electrical, R and D. Tomorrow is just a whisper or suddenly all is quiet. There is no cold hand brushing against your forehead, no rustle in the reed. Trying to talk to the wind is trying to talk to the city some- How do we? I was really hoping she'd be in the village. <sighs> okay. She's probably north of the village, and this place is a peninsula. I think there's people west of here. We could ask them. Indeed. You hear what sounds like two men arguing where the lieutenant is pointing. And then there's the church. We've already searched that and can rule it out. I know it doesn't feel like progress, but exclusion is a step too. Anyway, we do it the old-fashioned way, sector by sector. Go over the whole peninsula. Ask the locals, enter the places where we can enter first, like we did in the village. Then, if we're desperate, we can look where we can't enter. Bankers, tomb drainage, this place, I'm sure it won't come to that. Walk the coast, the old boardwalk, the reeds. You can always come back here and talk to the wind again. Look where it already got you. An adventure awaits. An adventure on the windswept urban coast. Buckle up and raise your collar. This search is going to be wet and cold.
this some tear. An empty... Hello, I'm Gary. How do you do, officer? Yellow man. I mean, officer. The lieutenant raises his eyebrows slightly and takes out his notebook. Yellow man. Interesting. This is something to ask him about after a little probing first. I'm just waiting for my friend Morel to finish up with his insect traps so we can return to civilization. 